This evening, we start with a chaotic recount effort down in Florida. The recount imperiling the slim leads of Governor Rick Scott, running to unseat Democratic Senator Bill Nelson, and Ron DeSantis, who's running for governor to replace Scott. Republicans are rightfully pointing to Broward County, the second most populous county all of Florida. And it may also be its most corrupt and poorly run, something the president pointed out earlier today. Let's watch. What's going on in Florida is a disgrace. Go down and see what happened over the last period of time, 10 years. Take a look at Broward County. Take a look at the total dishonesty of what happened with respect to Broward County. Broward County, just press, Broward County slash election. There's a lot of dishonesty. In moments, we're going to be talking to Republican Florida representative and candidate for agriculture commissioner Matt Cowell. Now, he's seen his own lead vanish in the wake of this new recount, and he's steaming mad at Broward County. But first, on the latest regarding these recounts and the many lawsuits that are swirling around, we're going to go to Phil Keating live in Miami tonight. Phil? Good evening, Governor. The Florida vote counting appears to be almost finally complete, but not quite yet. Believe it or not, right now in Broward County, they are still counting the final remaining provisional ballots. All of this happening on a day when Governor Rick Scott, the Republican candidate for Senate, wins two times in court. Tonight, outside the Broward County Elections Department, yes, even tonight, protesters are still demonstrating, with Democrats and Republicans trading accusations of attempting to steal the election, election from both sides. Inside the building all day and into tonight, Broward's canvassing board went through all remaining provisionals, comparing signatures and voter intent before either validating the ballot or tossing it out. Miami-Dade and most other Florida counties already have, done, have finished their counts. Now, in Broward and Palm Beach counties this afternoon, Governor Scott won both of his lawsuits with the judges forcing those election supervisors to allow campaign observers better access to the process and the ability now to immediately start inspecting Broward County's voter records, which the Scott team had wanted to do all along. Governor Scott reacted with this, quote, Bill Nelson is trying to commit voter fraud in broad daylight, and we won't let them. We will continue to fight for full transparency and accountability. Scott's Tuesday night lead over Democratic Senator Bill Nelson has shrunk to just 15,000 votes right now, less than two-tenths of one percent out of eight million votes cast. That's how close it is, as more and more votes were counted and added to the totals for the past three days. Senator Nelson swung back. Quote, he isn't telling the truth, Governor Scott, which is votes are not being found. They're being counted. Now, one thing Governor Scott did ask the uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement to do uh, last night was to investigate any improprieties with the vote count process. After a full day, the FDLE says they have found no evidence of any fraud or irregularities. Unofficial election results from all 67 Florida counties due in Tallahassee tomorrow by noon. Then the Secretary of State will add up all the numbers and if any race is decided by a margin of less than half a percent, as appears to be the case in the Senate and Governor's race, then they will automatically be ordered for a mandatory machine recount. And most counties we spoke with today intend to do that as soon as the order comes in tomorrow afternoon. Governor. So, Phil, you thought the elections were over and you were going to have a nice, calm weekend. Boy, were you ever wrong, right? I tell you, 10 days of this midterm craziness and it's just beginning, I feel. But how come it is that 66 counties in Florida can get it right and Broward County can't even find all the ballots until four days after the election? I mean, how do they justify a, that? Well, uh, Right now, they haven't actually provided detailed answers as to how this happened. There have been reports tonight of duffel bags with perhaps up to 100 mail-in ballots that had yet to be delivered, so they missed the deadline and those votes may not count. And there were also some postal workers out of that Opelika, Florida facility where that uh, suspicious mail bomb package for Senator Corey was found a few weeks back in the mail bomber story. Uh, some workers there took some photos of a lot of piles of mail-in ballots that were still sitting there undelivered to supervisors of elections office, but still very unclear 
Had those arrived after Tuesday or had they been there before Tuesday? A lot of questions right now. But, you know, a lot of people call the Broward County Elections Department inept at times. Well, I'll let you be the judge. I think it's easier for a three-year-old to find Easter eggs than it is for Broward County to find ballots. Phil, thank you very much. <laughs> now we go to Trace Gallagher for more on the corruption surrounding elections in Broward County, Florida. Trace? Governor, in Broward County, not only are there votes yet to be counted in the Florida Senate race between Republican Governor Rick Scott and Democratic Senator Bill Nelson, just a short time ago they found bags of early mail-in votes that had somehow gotten lost, which only adds to the county's infamous election reputation, starting with Gore v. Bush in 2000, where after a razor-thin finish of the presidential race, reports started coming out over so-called dimples and hanging chads, paper ballots that were not punched all the way through and therefore not counted. The Gore campaign asked for a recount in four Florida counties, including Broward. 36 days and 45 lawsuits later, the Supreme Court stopped the recount and Bush won the election. Then in 2004, the presidential election between George W. Bush and John Kerry, Broward County Election Supervisor Brenda Snipes, who is currently embroiled in the Nelson Scott Senate controversy, accused the U.S. Postal Service of losing close to 60,000 absentee ballots. She later lowered the number to 6,000 and dropped off replacement ballots to the U.S. Postal Service the Saturday before the election after mail carriers had gone home, prompting one postal worker to say, quote, there's no way in hell those people are going to get their ballots in a timely fashion. They should get their act together over there. The snafu meant thousands of voters in the Democratic-leaning county were out of luck. Of course, Bush went on to win. Finally, in 2016, the 23rd congressional district race between Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Tim Canova landed Brenda Snipes in court. Canova asked to physically inspect Broward County's votes, but Brenda Snipes' office had destroyed the physical copies and only kept digital copies, a violation of the law stating physical copies must be kept for 22 months after an election. Governor. Thank you, Trace. Well, our next guest saw his lead evaporate seemingly overnight. Here to tell us about the lawsuit that he just filed is Florida State Representative Mac Caldwell. He's the Republican candidate for Agriculture Commissioner. Matt, why did you feel the need to file the lawsuit? Well, thank you, Governor. And you uh, said it earlier. I, I am steaming mad about this. You know, we went to bed Tuesday night with a 40,000 vote lead. And over the course of the last three days, uh, the Broward County Supervisor has continued to find magic bags of ballots uh, that have turned that into a 3,000 vote uh, loss. It's, it's really spectacular. And, and you know, uh, the voters deserve to have a straight answer. There's 8 million people, roughly, that voted in this election. And the fact that we can't get a satisfactory answer for now, uh, after three days of asking, where did these ballots come from? When were they cast? And why hadn't they been counted yet? Uh, it's completely outrageous. You know, we, we worked very hard. We were on the campaign trail uh, for nearly two years straight. Uh, Florida is not a small state. We traveled corner to corner, 100,000 plus miles campaigning. Uh, and to have this uh, done uh, to our family, to our campaign, all the people that have put that time in, I, I just think is uh, frankly unjust. So uh, we did file a lawsuit today uh, and demand that, that she provide answers. Where did these ballots come from and why are they still being counted? You know, you're supposed to have all of your early votes uh, tabulated and reported a half an hour after the polls closed. So 7.30 Eastern is when those were due. That's still open. If you check the state's website now, uh, Friday night here at 10 p.m., that is still open in her report. It, it's just totally outrageous. And uh, not only can we not uh, trust the answer at this point, but we can't even begin to figure out why we couldn't trust the answer because we can't get a straight uh, comment from her in any way whatsoever about this situation. Matt, we've got some uh, sound with uh, Brenda Snipes, the election commissioner down there. I'd like for you to take a listen to it and then get your reaction to it. This is uh, earlier today. But other counties have been able to do it. But other counties didn't have 600,000 votes out there. Well, Miami-Dade did. Well, have you been inside Miami? Never mind. Let me go check. I'll check. So, Matt, you, you've seen this. You've heard her excuse. It doesn't seem like that that's satisfactory to you or to a whole lot of other people in Florida who uh, who cast their ballots believing they were going to be counted Tuesday night. 
Nobody takes that credibly. I mean, we, we have numerous large counties. Miami-Dade County is one of the largest counties in the country. Uh, they got all of their ballots counted and reported in a timely fashion on Tuesday night. Orange County, where Orlando is, millions of people. Hillsborough County, where Tampa is, millions of people. Again, it's just a habitual problem with Broward County. And, you know, we listed some of the problems we've seen in the past in our uh, lawsuit today. Uh, you have allegations from a former employee of hers that in 2016, uh, she caught employees filling out blank ballots by the stacks back in a secret locked room. And uh, I mean, this is really disturbing stuff. And then you look at this scenario uh, where, again, we went to bed on Tuesday night with a substantial lead and it magically disappears uh, over the last three days, uh, just enough ballots uh, to not only uh, push our victory into a loss, according to her tally, uh, but also to push both the Senate race and the governor's race uh, into a recount. Uh, it just stinks to high heaven. And again today, uh, another 2,100 ballots reportedly that were just found. Uh, misplaced, set aside. Uh, we can't even get a straight answer to that. You know, the governor filed his lawsuits. Uh, both of his have been uh, victorious so far, and, and his were very simple. Uh, just give us the public records that prove uh, you have been counting these ballots in a, uh, in a regular manner over the last several days that we can at least, you know, see a trail of custody so that we can see that these have been handled properly. We've got accusations coming out uh, that they have been uh, replacing damaged ballots. You know, something comes in the mail, it's torn, it, it can't feed through the machine correctly. Uh, the supervisor is allowed to create a duplicate, but it has to be done with it has to be done with the supervision of multiple people so that they can testify that it was done accurately. Meanwhile, we've got rumors that they're just doing the replacements without anybody in the room, running new ballots through, and who knows what votes are being counted. You know, Matt, I think that's what is a, a great concern to everybody. We don't know where these ballots have been. It's not just that they're being discovered, but where have they been? We thank you so much, and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on your lawsuit to see how this all turns out. Hope you get some rest this thank weekend you, in spite of all of this. Great to have you with us. Well, the Pollock family has seen firsthand how the incompetence in Broward County can have tragic results. They lost their beautiful girl, Meadow Pollock, in the tragic Parkland shooting earlier this year. In the aftermath of that tragedy, we learned disturbing details about the incompetence of the sheriff's office in Broward County. Earlier today, to voice their displeasure with the rank corruption engulfing Broward, father and son Andrew and Hunter Pollock let a protest. They join us now to tell us why. Andrew, thank Hunter, you, Governor. first of all, thank you for being with us. I know this brings up some really painful memories for you due to uh, the fact that uh, you lost a daughter and uh, a sister in the Parkland shooting. Uh, you think Broward County and the manner in which they handle that were a big part of that. Tell me why. Well, let me tell you, uh, Governor, no, no one's been affected more by Broward County than myself and my son and, and my family. Uh, my daughter was murdered in Broward County. And as I started looking into this investigation, I could explain to all the listeners out there how this is happening in Broward County. You have a superintendent in Broward who's a Democrat who brought policies to Broward County that led to my daughter getting murdered. You got a sheriff in Broward County who's a Democrat who who's a failed leader. He has a vote of no confidence from his own union, a Democrat. Then you got uh, an SOE who's also a Democrat who's already been brought up on fraud. These leaders are all unethical, liberal Democrats that aren't capable of running, running a preschool, let alone a county. So it's very important that when, when people see what's going on in Broward, this is, these people are unethical. Uh, you got a Broward Teachers Union, all Democrats. Uh, you got the school board, all Democrats. And to me, I've seen it unfold. You know, it's nothing new. We've had these problems in Broward, and it leads to unethical liberal Democrats, Mike. Andrew, I guess the question would, would be, if this level of incompetence is so evident, why do the voters put up with it? It doesn't seem to matter whether it's Democrat or Republican. This is not about the parties. It's about the people whose lives are being adversely affected. Why do people in Broward County not demand a change and enact a change? Well, I was we're, there we're today personally. Now. We were there. If you look at uh, we showed up at the protest. Go ahead, Hunter. 
If you look at yeah, Bay Hunter, County where a hurricane, a catastrophic hurricane just ruined the whole area, within hours they were able to get their votes ballot, their votes casted. Broward County right now is the laughing stock of the entire country. The governor stood by my family since the worst, the worst tragedy of our lives, and we're going to stand by him. They'll be damned if they think they'll steal this election from us. Yeah, we love Rick Scott. Hunter, he was there for our family, and yeah. we're going to be there for him in Broward. This is also very personal. I mean, with, uh, with the death of Meadow, this is not just an abstract thing to you. You lost your loved one, your, your daughter, your sister. Uh, do you hope, do you think that the voters of Broward County will finally get enough of this and say, we want to see something substantively change in Broward County? Well, that, that's why the, the sheriff's uh, scrambling right now, because he knows we're going to start holding these officials accountable. Uh, to me, my life, I tell people all the time, uh, the word that haunts me is accountability, Mike. And we haven't seen it in Broward County. And it's about time that, you know, we're going to put some officials uh, in place that are going to start holding these people accountable. you got a superintendent well, we hope you can do that's it. winning Andrew, awards. we've got to go. But I want to say thanks to you and uh, Hunter both for being here and sharing uh, the deep, deep personal story that you've experienced. Yep, it was an honor President speaking Trump, with you, Governor. Thank you very much. Well, President Trump has been voicing his displeasure about the recount efforts down in Florida from overseas. Coming up next, John Roberts is going to join us live from Paris. He's got the latest that he's hearing from the White House. Look, there's bad things have gone on in Broward County. I think that people have to look at it very, very cautiously. President Trump is keeping a close eye tonight on the Florida ballot controversy in Broward County. At this hour, the state's second biggest county is not just counting votes. They claim they're still finding votes and putting the results of the high stakes governor and Senate races into question. Chief White House correspondent John Roberts is live from Paris. He's with the president tonight. John, what's the latest? Governor, good to see you tonight from Paris. Earlier this morning, rather, and uh, because it's bad weather outside, we had to come inside. So we hope our little facsimile of the Eiffel Tower will suffice tonight. Clearly, this is an important issue for the president. He woke up on Wednesday morning thinking that they had picked up five Senate seats with the loss in Nevada by Dean Heller, netted out four. But now a couple of those races in Arizona and Florida are in question. And the president wants to get as many people uh, on the Republican banner in the Senate as possible to confirm federal judges and maybe even a Supreme Court judge. So on the way out the door from the White House to Paris this morning, the president voiced his concerns about it. Listen to what he said. What's going on in Florida is a disgrace. Go down and see what happened over the last period of time, 10 years. Take a look at Broward County. Take a look at the total dishonesty of what happened with respect to Broward County. Broward County, just press, Broward County slash election. There's a lot of dishonesty. And that was just the president getting warmed up because as soon as he hit his seat in Air Force One, he started tweeting. As soon as Democrats sent their best election stealing lawyer, Mark Elias, to Broward County, they miraculously started finding Democrat votes. Don't worry, Florida. I am sending much better lawyers to expose the fraud. The president went on. Rick Scott was up by 50,000 votes on Election Day, and now they found many votes, and he is only up 15,000 votes. The Broward effect. How come they never find Republican votes? The president also, with an eye cast toward Arizona, tweeting, just out in Arizona, signatures don't match. Electoral corruption. Call for a new election. We must protect our democracy. But the president getting thrown some shade from Democrats gubernatorial candidate Andrew Gillum in Florida after the president said Andrew Gillum conceded. Now he's back in play because of this recount. Gillum tweeting, quote, what's embarrassing to democracy is not counting every vote. And you, of course, referring to the president, count every vote. It's so important, again, because the president wants to get as many Republicans as possible in the Senate to get those judgeships through potential Supreme Court uh, nominee as well. And he's got Ohio in his back pocket now with the win from Mike DeWine. So that sets himself up well for 2020. If it were to happen that Ron DeSantis in this recount were to lose the governorship of Florida to Andrew Gillum, 
Well, that wouldn't put the president in as good a position for 2020 in the state of Florida. So that's why the president, uh, even though he's asleep right now, probably somewhere in his mind, uh, Governor, thinking very hard about what's going on in Florida, particularly Broward County in Arizona tonight as well. John, thank you very much. But I doubt the president is asleep. Be watching for a tweet any moment now. All right. Joining me with reaction is someone who knows the recount situation in Florida all too well. Former White House Press Secretary for Bush 43, Ari Fleischer. Also with me, former Pennsylvania Congressman Jason Altmaier. Ari, first to you. Why in the world are we back here? Yeah, this gives me the heebie-jeebies, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It, we're, we're back here because Broward County has a tradition, and you know, you're watching this tradition come into play. And what, what bothers me so much about the nation going through this again is the entire integrity of our democracy let, rests on elections that are meaningful and accepted. And you can't, after the ninth inning is played, the game is over, and one team wins, say, I've unilaterally decided we're going to go into extra innings and we're counting the runs differently. That appears to be what's happening in Broward. Jason, how troubling is it that some of these ballots, we have no idea where they've been since Tuesday. There's been no chain of possession. I, I, I know you're a Democrat, but you're a fair one. You're a good guy. How does that hit you in, in terms of just an objective view? Does that make you a little squeamish that we don't know where these ballots have been? There's no question that Broward County has a well-deserved reputation for infamous election day activities and I don't mean uh, anything criminal the Florida Department of Law Enforcement has looked into this I just think it's a it's an incredible lack of communication and for all the confrontation for all the lack of communication I think everyone should agree we should count every vote and as I understand it this process although it's taking longer than it should is the normal process the votes that came in up until the end of the early voting they were counted, and that's what was reported by 7.30 on election night. Then the votes that they're counting now, and it is taking longer than it should, and they'll have to account for that, uh, are the provisionals and the absentee ballots that came in subsequent to that up until Tuesday, election day. Under state law, those ballots have to be counted by tomorrow at noon. It appears they're going to reach that deadline. So I don't think anything mysterious or criminal has happened. It's just unfortunate that you have three races in Florida, it looks like, that effectively were fought to a tie. And when you have eight million votes count within the statistical margin of error of basically a tie, it gets ugly and it's messy and it's not fun to watch. But unfortunately, that seems to happen more often than not because Florida is such a divided state. But Ari, does that pass the smell test? I mean, all the other counties, including the ones hit by a hurricane, were able to get their votes counted on time. Broward County can't. And we don't know where those ballots were. There was one box that a teacher found just in a storage area. Who had possession of that? That's How a, long was it sitting there unattended? That's exactly the point, Governor. You, if you have to have faith in the process and when something goes wrong and things do go wrong, then there has to be a valid explanation and no valid explanation has been given. Nobody knows what is going on in Broward, why they were late, what ballots were found, why they were found late, why they were counted late. You just keep getting the additional votes, keep going and breaking for the Democrats. Now, maybe in a Democratic county, you can say bro votes would normally break for a Democrat, but by what percentage? How come? These are the explanations. This is called transparency. And when you have one powerful commissioner in charge of the elections with a history of mischief in the elections and been gotten in trouble legally for destroying ballots previously, you have to scratch your head and say, is this on the up and up? And that's the problem. It's all moving in one direction. And it's not just within the statistical margin of error. Tens of thousands of votes have been moving. That's the problem. And Jason, we've heard for two years, Russia, 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 they're interfering with the election. They're mucking it up and making it where we don't know really who should have won. H how do you not blame for Republicans who want to say Broward, 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 that they've messed it up? Look, both Republicans and Democrats are incredibly frustrated with what's happened in Broward because, as Ari just said, this is a repeated incident. This is circumstances that seem to happen every election there, and that's unfortunate, and there needs to be a review of what happened and probably a change made at the top in that county. But I think Governor Scott 
and Congressman DeSantis are still going to prevail. And it's unlikely you're going to see a 15,000 vote margin overturned in a hand recount. So at that point, they should be happy that every vote is counted. Again, it was messy. It wasn't handled in the way it was should. It wasn't communicated properly. But in the end, in order to have a valid outcome of the election, you have to count every vote. And that's what's happening. Well, thank you both. But you Ari, have to count Jason, every vote. Delighted that was to have you both here. During the no yeah. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. <laughs> OK. We, yeah, we've got to run. We just found out that they have uh, stopped the counting of the ballots tonight. They've recessed for the evening. They're going to get some sleep. Uh, I'm sure they need it. I'm sure they want it. And then a lot of coffee in the morning and a lot more counting. All right. Coming up.